What is the best work holding method for your CNC machine? This particular question has been asked almost as much as the question, what's the best CNC machine? And if you do a quick internet search or even a YouTube search, you're gonna to find tons and tons of different suggestions of methods that folks have tried and used. And if you're not careful, you will mess around and spend a boatload of money on stuff that you won't never use again, I promise you. Ask me how I know. I have spent money on toe clamps and hold down clamps. I've even 3D printed my own clamps. I've even bought clamps that really were not intended to be used on a CNC machine. And then there's a spoil board. I've tried T-Track, threaded inserts, cam clamps, dog holes, just about everything you can imagine. But I eventually retired all that stuff and I settled on the most inexpensive and reliable method I have come up with yet. I use scrap wood, PVC pipe, and simple double-sided tape. And all those other clamps now live in my toolbox, never to be touched again. Though I do still use these guys every once in a while. And I'll show you what I use them for in just a minute. My waste board now is made up of nothing but dog holes. They're about a little over three inches apart. The center section of my waste board is actually removable, and I use that to accommodate my rotary axis, as well as a vertical cutting surface. And even though a waste board is meant to be a consumable, I do my best not to mark it up or gouge it out to keep it nice and level. And for smaller stuff that I don't trust the double-sided tape, I prefer to screw it down to keep it nice and secure. So to keep my the main waste board clean, I come up with this little secondary waste board to screw smaller stuff and oddly shaped stuff down to keep it secure. I use the PVC pipe as stops that I push down into the dog holes. And as you see here, I've created a fence with them that I use to line my work up with. And then I push them down on the outside of the work piece and use wedges that I merely cut out of scrap wood to secure them to the fence. And in the event that the wedge doesn't hit the stop, I can just use another piece of scrap wood as a spacer to make it all fit. Now admittedly on super aggressive cuts, the wedges can back out from the vibration of the spindle. So I bought these clamps off of Amazon and I just lightly press them up against the wedges and it keeps them in place. And when I cut my dog holes, I'm careful to make sure that they're all 90 degrees with the gantry so I can pull the stops out from the lower fence and create yet another fence anywhere on the waste board. I'm taking the opportunity in this video to fix some design flaws and update everything. And one thing in particular is the center section is not very rigid in the center. And the reason being is, is that I have yet another piece of MDF underneath the top piece. And at first I thought that would be enough to keep it rigid, but it's not. So I'll come up with this idea. I had some extra aluminum extrusion laying around and I just kind of position them there in the center, which is much more rigid than the MDF. As you can see here, it is much more rigid in the center, much more stable. I also use a tool setter on my machine and up till now I've just set it in the bottom left hand corner of the waste board sitting on top, but it gets knocked off or risk getting hit by the machine. So I'm going to cut out the bottom left hand corner to accommodate that and also get rid of that dog hole. I don't know why I put it there. It has no use whatsoever. And I'm going to add two dog holes because as you see here, when I use narrow pieces, it's pretty deep, hard to clamp down and keep 90 degrees. So I'm gonna add a dog hole here and here to fix that problem. Now 
Now back in the olden days, I used to use wood screws to screw the waste board down to the tabletop surface, but now I use threaded inserts. And this just helps make it clean and neat and secure and repeatable. And that way I'm not marring up my table with wood screws every time I change out the waste board. And despite me being careful, every now and again, I'll cut my dog hose a little too deep and I mar up the table, but they're not too bad. Now, I just mentioned the threaded inserts. If you notice, I have that one bolt in the bottom left-hand corner, but that's gonna be replaced by the little cubby that I'm gonna cut out for the tool setter. So what I'll have to do, once I get that in place, is I'll need to add two screws to help secure that corner of the waste board. So I'll remove that one and then cut two new holes to add threaded inserts in. I drew up the pattern for the threaded inserts on the table in Vetric. So what I'll do is just use that same pattern to cut the bolt holes into the waste board. That way they'll easily line up with each other. And since I don't have one solid waste board and they split into three, I have to cut them separately, obviously. But what I do is, like you see here, I'll clamp the first piece down, get it lined up where I want it. And then I'll cut just a few starter holes secure it down with the bolts and I can remove the clamps and cut the rest of the holes into the waste board. When I cut the bolt holes into the waste board, I obviously cut one pass all the way through, which is the diameter of the bolt. But then I'll also cut a countersink that is about half an inch deep since the MDF is three quarters deep. That leaves a quarter inch of the MDF for the bolt to secure down to. And the countersink's deep enough to where if I ever need to resurface the waste board, I have several resurfaces that I can make without even get, ever getting too close to the, the bolt head. Like I mentioned, those first holes I'm cutting are just starter holes. So once they're done, I can remove the clamps and then put the bolts in the holes I just cut, secure it down to the table. Then I'll cut the remaining holes after that. Now you'll see me use a ratchet to tighten these things down and you don't want them Jesus Christ tight because you'll end up splitting the MDF. And if you're curious what Jesus Christ tight means, if you've ever tried to loosen a nut or a bolt and you had to strain real hard, you go, Jesus Christ, that's tight. And just like I did on the first piece of MDF, I'll cut starter holes to secure it down before I cut the rest of the holes in it. And instead of clamping this down, I just held it down with my hands. It was very, very easy.
And once all the bolt holes are cut and the MDF secured down to the bed, I'll cut out this little corner for my tool setter. And for those that don't already know, MDF is hell on a bit. It'll dull it in a heartbeat. So I keep some old bits laying around just for MDF. That way I'm not messing up my good bits. And I cut the first dog hole here as a test just to make sure everything fit like it was supposed to. And then once I confirm that the PVC stops fit right, I cut the rest of the dog holes. And then finally, once all the dog holes are cut, I'll make a surface and pass to level everything up. And there you have it. My take on a CNC waste board. It was incredibly easy to design, incredibly easy to make, and most importantly, it's incredibly easy to maintain. And because I'm using work holding made from scrap wood and PVC pipe, if I happen to hit it with a spindle or tear something up, all I gotta do is walk over to the table saw and make another one. It takes me about 10 seconds. So I hope this helps somebody give you some ideas on how to design your own and like always, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. It really does help. Y'all take care.